Thank you, uh, everyone, for coming here today and being with us and joining in this uh, historic event. Before we get started, I'd like to call my uncle, Dwight Howe, our cultural director, to uh, lead us with an invocation. Uncle. <clears throat> I hope my relatives, uh, let's uh, all be of one heart and one mind at, at this time. Grateful for all of you. Ede Wongi. To, to all of you, Dati Uda, I'm glad you're here. And Dati Wakanda, Wakanda Kube, Daya Wale Wakanda, Ponka Neshiga, Umaha Neshiga, Okites Wakanda Weebaho, Ish Agis, Ish Agis Dinge, Wakanda Weebaho, Wauzinga, Wakanda Daya Chuari, Wakanda Weebaho, Father God. Say thank you for today, thank you for all our relatives, uh, all that came here today. We just want something good, Father God, for our children, for our elders. We thank you for uh, our ancestors. Manchu Nanji, all he wanted was something for his people. Now today, you know, it's like that. We we're grateful, but we we'll acknowledge you in all things, from the, the smallest to, to the biggest thing then before us, the challenges that we have, the staff that made this possible, all of you that are standing here today. I ask these things not for myself, but for all of my relations. Ede Wonge, Ahu. Again, thank each and every one of you for being here today and joining with us. This has been a long road for our people, uh, for our elders uh, that uh, went through termination and are alive yet today to see this come to fruition. And without them, without their sacrifice and all the things that they've been through, we wouldn't be here today. So for our elders that are here today, uh, again, we honor you uh, with, what, with what this uh, event represents. Along the way, we've had many great partnerships with uh, different entities along the way. Shakopee, without a doubt, has been with us every step of this journey. Uh, we, we honored our, our attorney yesterday who worked tirelessly on this issue. But one of the, the most important partnerships that we have with this is Carter Lake itself. And Mayor Ron Cumberledge, uh, when we first started this process, uh, was a council member. We met uh, many times over the years. We thought this was gonna happen years ago. And uh, here we are, we're both older now. And uh, somebody said, talking about gray hairs yesterday, all mine are attributed to this. Um, but without this, without this relationship with Carter Lake, the people, their city council, their planning board, working with this, and the understanding the unique status that this land has for the Ponca people, and how we make that work with the city of Carter Lake, really wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for their understanding and their willingness to work with us. And so with that, we'd like to, uh, I'd like to introduce Mayor Ron Cumberledge to say a few words for us, please. Good morning, thanks for coming to this event. It's, it's been a long planned out, real detailed process here. I mean, this project brings new life to a piece of ground that hasn't seen anything in decades. When they first came to us and they realized that we're a two mile square town with 3,700 people, we have limited resources. They stepped up to the plate, turned into a partnership that's gonna fund this community with, with resources where we can move forward. At this time, I mean, it, it's my honor as a mayor of Carter Lake to, to welcome this Prairie Rose Casino and the Ponca Tribe of Nebraska to our town. Thank you. For the mayor and the city's support, we'd like to honor him with this blanket here today. Thank you, mayor. Appreciate it. Next, we have the honor of joining us today is Chairman Ernie Stevens, Jr. from uh, National Indian Gaming Association. Through the years, I've kind of been a, a shadow uh, whenever I had the chance uh, to follow Ernie around and talk with him and 
and look at the work that NIGA has done on behalf of Indian country and what gaming means to Indian country as a whole. We're late to the process, but we hope to be one of the new best facilities in Indian country. No offense to my other tribal relatives here and, and Shakopee too. <laughs> But we've got great staff, and uh, with, with Ernie's leadership, we know that Indian Country Gaming is in good hands, and we're honored here today to have him say a few words. Thank, thank you, Chairman. Congratulations. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I just want to say thank you for allowing me to be here. Uh, uh, the invitation to the National Indian Gaming Association based in Washington, D.C., is amazing and we're excited to be here. I appreciate the invitation, Chairman Wright, and the members of the Ponca Council, and most of all to your community. It's an amazing, amazing day today. I'm honored and humbled to be here at this grand opening. We look forward to observing how these revenues will fund tribal programs and services that will benefit the 4,200 uh, members of the tribe. Indian gaming has been a catalyst for many tribal governments, not only to enrich the lives of its members, but also to add to the local state economies around them, not only through gaming, but through economic ventures as well that will continue to grow through the economy. Again, congratulations. We appreciate everything you've done. I think that, that uh, <coughs> Chairman Wright said it best in his recent press statement. Our commitment to bettering the lives of our people and communities in which we live, work, and raise our families is stronger than ever. There are so many good things that, that are a reality for Indian country today because of Indian gaming. It's been 30 years since the Indian Gaming Regulatory Act was passed. 248 tribes have made IGRA work through more than 489 Indian gaming facilities across the country. Our native people have begun to rebuild our once forgotten communities. Indian gaming revenues are working to improve tribal education, health and elder care, social services, provide police and fire protection, water, sewer, and sanitation systems, and to rebuild, rebuild tribal infra infrastructure and revitalize our tribal languages and culture. And that's very, very strong priority for all of us. I also want to share some, just a quick, uh, some numbers, and then I'll conclude, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, Chairman and I are friends. He knows that I could do this for a long time. <laughs> I spoke yesterday in Phoenix at a fatherhood's, fatherhood is, is leadership conference, and I was only 40 minutes into the speech, and the lady started giving me these cue cards, so I hope you don't have any cue No, I'll be brief. I, was, I promise. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. I also want to share the positive impacts of Indian gaming has on our communities and states around us. Just a, a few brief statistics. Indian gaming is a proven catalyst for economic growth. In, in, Indian gaming has generated $31.2 billion in revenues, $4.21 billion in ancillary revenues through hotels, restaurants, shopping malls, resorts, and spas, and other spending. Okay. The total revenues generated with Indian Gaming was $35.4 billion in 2016. It's a 4.4 increase over 2015. It allows our communities to thrive and grow with commerce. And I, you know, I just want to emphasize that the, uh, the agreement here with, uh, with Carter Lake it's, it's just amazing. And too many times you read about some of the lack of agreement or you read some of the struggles in the newspapers. I read three to five newspapers. I already read your paper to, uh, last night when I came in. And I got read the Wall Street Journal, USA Today. Too many times we print the wrong things or the tough things. Nobody prints the fact that disagreement represents the majority of what we do in Indian country. 30, or 42, 35 billion dollars in our industry and and we these agreements reflect the majority of Indian gaming so thank you again for your leadership and bringing us together here today last thing I'll talk about is jobs in some cases it's just about jobs you know it, it's just about giving people an opportunity in, in addition to the uh, to 308,000 jobs we have an additional 400 or 4,000 jobs in regulatory staff that are also employed uh, for a total of 312,000. And then 332,000 jobs are created through Indian gaming, uh, uh, at totaling 679,000 direct and indirect jobs. These jobs equate 
the improved quality of life for those employees, and, and, and excellent benefits in health care, disability, and retirement. Retirement, that's got to be around the corner sometime. I'm looking forward to that. The facility employed 700 people during construction and will employ 1,200 people now that it is in operation. National job statistics that I just explained to you just went up by 1,200 people right here in Carter Lake. The salaries, benefits, and additional spending that these employees will extend into the broader community can only be a win-win for, for all of the community. And folks, we've only just begun. In my closing remarks, I want to just say on behalf of the 184 tribes that the National Union Gaming Association represents in Washington, D.C., that we're very excited for today. Your leadership and example and interaction within this, inter within this uh, arena is why this industry is successful. We know your traditions of upholding peace, prosperity, and happiness will continue to, to grow and flourish with your people. Again, in, 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 uh, in, I'm not going to give you a series of closing. I just wanted to tell you how, how excited I am to be here. I'll be telling these guys old sports stories and us driving through these communities in our old red station wagons and with boxers and basketball players and my little family. I have my wife and I, when we finished college, we, we, we didn't pen, finish paying our student loans into our mid-40s. And we have five children. And, and our, young, our oldest is the vice chairman of our tribe, and the youngest is a doctorate student at the University of Kansas. None of those five kids have a student loan because of Indian gaming. Today, we take another giant step forward, and congratulations to, to the Ponca tribe, and congratulations to Carter Lake. I just can't tell you how excited I am to be here today with all of you and all the people that made it happen. So again, thank you, and God bless you, and we wish you nothing but prosperity in your future. Thank you again, Chairman. Next, uh, we wouldn't be here today without the generous, generosity of the Shakopee Midewakantan Sioux community and all that they've uh, helped us with over the years. Uh, you know, I want to recognize first and foremost uh, Tom Ranfrans. Raise your hand, Tom. I met Tom many years ago and started, started talking about opportunities and, and, and different things to try and help, help our people. And it wasn't the first time that the, the Shakopee uh, community has helped the, the Ponkas, but it was through Tom's leadership and friendship uh, that he helped guide us uh, down the road and, and to help identify different ways that uh, the Shakopee may be of uh, help with us. And, and not just for this project, but many other community development projects that we've done over the years through their generosity, through gaming. And uh, they've allowed us to do many different things up in our homeland, uh, in our different areas, uh, to help us uh, give grant funding through gaming, uh, to help us develop our, our new uh, facility here in Ralston with our new clinic, our new tribal administration building, uh, land uh, purchase in our homelands. All these different development uh, funding that we wouldn't be able to get started without the help uh, of, of them and uh, the, the funds to get a plan in place to go after the funding to make those projects come to fruition. And Tom's been at the, at the very center of that from my time on Tribal Council. And so, Tom, I want to thank you. We're here today in large part because of your work. So thank you very much. But Shakopee as a whole as I said, has helped us in this project. They've helped fund us throughout the years in our legal battles, which have been the lion's share of the cost of, of, of this project, and for many tribes, uh, their projects as well. But they've also helped us uh, buy land through grants. Uh, years ago, they gave us a million dollar grant to purchase land that is now our parking lot. 
and, and, and many other aspects along the way. They are the funders of the financing for this casino today. And it's through their generosity and, and working with them over the years that they've helped us. They've helped identify uh, Krauss Anderson, folks from Krauss, so our construction people. Please uh, raise your hand. Doug, your team. <laughs> Brought in first class construction people that they've worked with on other projects that knew how they worked and knew that they would take care of tribes, as well as LSC, the designers of this facility. Raise your hand, guys. Appreciate it. Helping us flatten the learning curve to get to where we are today has been instrumental for making this project happen. From the time that we've gotten our second approval to do this project, on November 17th last year, we're opening on November 1st of this year. So in less than a year's time, because of their commitment, their resources, their recommendations, we've been able to do this here today. But again, throughout all of that time, from Chairman Vig's time as chairman, Rebecca, your time, and those that have come before them, uh, Chairman Crooks, they've been very helpful and very open to us all along the way. And I want to say, um, Joe Dean, where's Joe Dean at? Is he out here? There he is. I thought our finance director was tough. That's the, he's the man up there. But thank you for all that work. And members of the Shakopee community that are here with us today, thank you on behalf of the Ponca Nation. And with that, I'd like to call up Mr. Chairman Charlie Vig to say a few words. Well, thank you, Chairman. I want to start by first recognizing some of the other these guys took all my words here, you know, they, Ernie, you know, my, my speech says three minutes, I don't know, but, um, yeah. Um, I want to recognize some of the other, I, I, I won't say names because I'm really poor with names, but I do recognize some other tribal leaders. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you for doing what you do uh, as a tribal leader. I know how hard it is to, to get things accomplished uh, in our communities and, and with the people. But uh, thank you, and I also want to recognize the, the mayor. Thank you for being here, Mr. Mayor. Um, <clears throat> in our communities, um, one of my biggest challenges, or our biggest challenges as leaders, I think, is, is educating the, the surrounding neighbors. They don't, uh, they don't, we do things different. We have sovereign rights. We do, uh, we do things a little different. It's not a tax base. Uh, system that that the normal that's what's the norm but I just want to thank you and uh, for understanding and working with this tribe um, we have a we have a really good relationship with our county officials now and we we're within two cities so we have, I deal with two mayors um, but it's it's educating them it's it's our job as leaders to to work with the public to educate them on, on how we do things. So um, it sounds like you're doing a great job uh, working with this tribe and, and I, I'm excited for, for, the, for the Ponca tribe to be at this point. We, um, I can only remember it was in the 80s when we started bingo, high stakes bingo. And Shakby being out, me as a young boy, um, living out in the, I thought it was out in the wilderness uh, it's only you know, ten miles from town, but but there was nothing, and uh, and I, and and I know you you guys have you have a much larger tribe than we started out with, and I'm ex really excited for you to think of uh, twenty years from now, ten years from now. Uh, we talked, we 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 talk a lot about planning. We talk about uh, they were already talking about the additions onto this building. I'm excited for that. I, I think. Uh, um, you as your members will be, uh, uh, our goal is to be self-sufficient, and this is one way that we can do that, and, and uh, so thank you for that. Um, I wanted to recognize our, we brought a, a small delegation from our tribe, um, and again, I won't say the names because I'll even screw that up, but <clears throat> I do have to recognize our, our Secretary Treasurer, Rebecca, 
Stratton Crooks. <clears throat> and we're fortunate to have only three tribal uh, officials on our council. Uh, most, I think that's probably the smallest uh, council in the country. Um, I think you guys have like eight or something, nine. nine. Um, but that's uh, our, our vice chairman, Keith Anderson, was not, been, not able to make it today, so he sends his uh, congratulations and, and uh, says uh, sorry for not being here. But, and who else? Uh, I think uh, the chairman already recognized some of our, our, some of our staff or our people that we've worked with on many jobs. Our little tribe, <clears throat> and I can't take credit for this, but our, our past leaders, our, our elders, our leaders, our ancestors did all this for us, for our tribe. We, they set us up in ways with our, it started with bingo. That was the first real economic uh, boost that we had. And, but we did smart things with that. We, we invested, we diversified early, we, we uh, did many things. And then we, got, we finally got our first casino. And it's really changed our lives. But through that, <clears throat> one of the things that we've done is, is uh, we, we do grants and we do loans to other tribes, primarily because there is not a lot of resources out there for tribes. Um, so I, I've been fortunate enough to follow our leaders' footsteps on continuing them, them goals on, on do donations and grants. Um, the, um, but anyway, through that, uh, we, we've, we've uh, uh, each tribe, I believe, they'll go through a process when they want to start a casino um, on selecting their architects or their builders. Um, these builders that you have here have worked on many projects, and I want to thank you for, for all of the good work that you guys have done and, and continue to do. Um, and our staff, they recognize Joe Dean. He is, uh, he is our, our right hand for our, uh, our community, and um, thank you for doing what you do, Joe. And then I recognize some of the other, the, um, uh, they already recognize Tom. Tom's our, our, our boots on the ground. That's how I look at Tom. He goes to a lot of tribes. I was amazed when I meet with him. He tells me how many tribes he's meeting with. But that's, uh, there's such a demand out there. Um, we do approximately $20 million in grants a year to tribes, mostly on economic development projects, to try to help them establish jobs and economic growth. <clears throat> We get about sixty million dollars in request, and that's just for those that have some hope that that we can do something. Um, we probably we have a roughly about five hundred million in in loans to tribes across the country that we've done to uh, help them get started. Uh, there is some uh, members. Uh, I know Randy Carter is here. Randy Carter has been part of this uh, movement to to open this facility. Randy used to work for us at our casino. And uh, thank you, Randy, for doing what you do. Um, and then Joe Wittershine, I don't know where Joe is. Joe is right here. Joe has also um, been a, future, a past employee of ours and, and worked with us a long time. And now we, he's, uh, he's been helping out with the tribes, going to, to assist in there their openings and uh, running their, to streamline their operations. But I'll, I'll start reading my script now. <clears throat> so on behalf of the Shakopee, Midwakan and Sioux community, I want to thank you for, and welcome you to this celebration. And thank you for uh, allowing us to be here. Um, and if I missed any other dignitaries, uh, thank you for being here and and, uh, and thank you for what you do in your communities. Our community is committed to sharing our resources. It is part of our culture and something we did even when we had little. Now we're fortunate enough to help communities across the country. As part of this, we've, we've provided over four, 500 million in economic development loans to many different tribes. We offer loans to support them 
and their investments in their communities. We're proud that we provided loans to the Ponca tribe to build this new casino. This facility will bring entertainment, jobs, and economic growth to both your community and the surrounding region. Today is a moment that our tribe carefully, your tribe carefully planned a long time, and this, it is something you should be very proud of. And I had, I had mentioned uh, working with our counties. Our little tribe uh, that started out with uh, 50 members um, is now a lot larger than that, but we didn't have any jobs. And today we, we hold 4,200 jobs in our community, in our county. And, and, uh, and uh, what that does to the surrounding communities um, is, is pretty amazing because we, uh, we have that many jobs. So today, <clears throat> I am honored to uh, celebrate this ideal becoming a reality with you. And um, I think that's all I was going to say. But <laughs> so thank you guys for being here. Congratulations and uh, good luck. I'd like to call Rebecca up as well and honor her on behalf of the business committee for Shakopee. I know she's new to our efforts, but we still appreciate the work that she does and her leadership. Next, I'd like to uh, call up the chairman of our Ponca Gaming Enterprise Board, uh, Matt Kennedy. Aho, Ponca Waconti Kiari, Udon Wangide Datite. Good morning. As the chairman of the Ponca Gaming Enterprise Board, we want to express our warmest welcome to all of you here to our new Ponca uh, Prairie Flower Casino. The Ponca Gaming Enterprise is a business enterprise of the Ponca Tribe of Nebraska. The Ponca Tribal Council placed the gaming enterprise under a federal charter to reinforce our federal protections of our tribal sovereignty. And tribal sovereignty is the right for the Indian tribes to possess internal government power over all affairs within a tribe. And it's this unique political status that establishes a nation-to-nation -nation relationship between the federal government and our tribe. <clears throat> it's important to note that state governments do not have that authority. The, those powers to expand or contract the tribal sovereignty authority it rests solely with the federal government. And it is under this federal charter <clears throat> which was to separate from the Tribal Council, the PGE, Ponca Gaming Enterprise Board of Directors, has a responsibility in developing, maintaining, operating um, all gaming, resort, and hospitality businesses within the tribe. <clears throat> As a board, we provide oversight to the overall gaming and hospitality businesses while relying on our team, our general manager, and all the staff here at the uh, casino to run the day-to-day -day operations. As um, an entity, our mission is to empower the lives of our people through economic um, growth, employment, positive community relations, and by achieving financial self-determination. It's our vision to be the leading gaming and entertainment company in Western Iowa by providing exceptional services and experiences that reflect the Ponca tribe's traditions, 
and hospitality. Our core values are preserving our heritage. Every day we inspire to improve our knowledge of culture, keeping it alive in our families and our communities by utilizing the past resources as well as the current and future opportunities of learning. Always show compassion. Always be kind, understanding, thoughtful, and generous towards each other, our community, and our environment. And to act with integrity. To be responsible, accountable, and ethical. To be honest and trustworthy. Be respectful and tolerant. The history books have said that the Ponca tribe, other tribes in the region, have called us translated into um, the relentless pursuers. We we're persistent. My grandfather was a proud Ponca, and he's been an inspiration in my life. He would have been 100 years old this year, and his proud spirit, I believe, is here with us today. He's here with his people. He and his siblings were born on a family allotment outside of Verdell, Nebraska an allocated piece of rectangular land located between Ponca Creek to the south and the Ni or Ponca Creek to the north and Niobrara to the south. It was land that his mother grew up on, her father acquired as a dependent through the Dawes Act, and a land that his gra grandmother only knew as Ponca land. They didn't have much when they were growing up, the Dust Bowl and the, and the um, Depression uh, made those times really trying. When he was about 20 years old, he had an opportunity to move to the Pacific Northwest and, and make his way in the timber industry. <clears throat> he worked hard. He persisted. He persisted to make a better life for his family. Years later, he took that entre entrepreneurial spirit and he opened up an ice cream shop, burger shop, called the Dairy Dream and then moved on to a gas station. It was more profitable, it was a more stable business. When he passed away in the 19, early 1970s, he was still Ponca. However, he didn't have a tribe that was recognized by the federal government due to termination. And it was during those times in the early 1970s that I was born. And like many of us, all of us, Ponkas that were of similar age of myself. We were born Ponca. We were raised as proud Ponca youth, but to others, we were not recognized as Indian. But we never lost sight of who we were and who we are. 28 years ago, through the Ponca persistence, a few proud Ponca in their relatives, or in their relentless pursuit of regaining our tribal recognition, enabled the Ponca tribe in Nebraska to be restored. And over those past 28 years, many more of us have contributed our time, shared our knowledge and experience to help build the tribe up to where we are today. Each of us laying a foundation for the next group to build from. And this brings us here to why we are here today. As a sovereign nation, we continue to pursue the different paths towards self-sufficiency. This path has not been traveled without its obstacles. However, with our Ponca persistence, that relentless pursuit, our inherent determination, we have forged our way through the tangled brush of the river's edge to the tall grass of the prairies. And each Ponca that has made a part of this journey has helped lay a few stones that, the later, that later the rest of us can follow and lay our own stones in progress. This path is infinite. This path is trodden for our children to explore and expand, their children to experience and enlighten, and for their children to enhance and energize the many generations to come. Since time immemorial, the Ponca have called the Upper Missouri Valley home. Our enduring values of strength, wisdom, longevity, and determination helped our ancestors overcome countless ad Adver I can't say this right. Adver 
countless adversities throughout our history. Today, these values shape our commitment to helping our people become self-sufficient. Wangede, we blow home. Thank you, Matt. And I need to introduce and recognize a few people that are here today, too. Uh, first, Chris Legband serves on the Ponca Gaming Enterprise Board, is with us, has helped plan and, and, and get things going with that, has worked closely with Joe Wittershine as our consultant. I don't, uh, is Angie here? No, Angie's not here. And then next, I'd like to recognize our Ponca uh, Gaming Commission. And I said this yesterday, they've done about a year, maybe two years worth of work here in the last six months. And uh, they've had a lot on their plate. Uh, we've had a, uh, a great consultant working with us, Michael Lofsa. I know he's not here today. Uh, but the commissioner, I don't see any of the commissioners here today. So maybe they're hiding, uh, doing their sneaky work. But uh, we couldn't open without them. And they've done a lot of work in, in, a, in a short period of time. So we're very grateful for all the time that they've put in. Uh, next, I want to make sure I recognize the tribal council members that are with us today. Vice Chairwoman Becky Sullivan, Steve Larvey is with us, Crystal Howell from here in, in Omaha. So did I miss anybody? Oh, Candace. Sorry, Candace. Uh, Alex, Patrick. I, I can't read my own notes. Sorry. I'm a little overwhelmed here today. Thank for each of those, uh, all those individuals have worked uh, many hours on this project and in different ways. And uh, some uh, hands-on, others uh, quick decisions that have needed to be made. Uh, Randy Carter was mentioned earlier. Randy Carter uh, doesn't, the grass does not grow under the feet of Randy Carter. So uh, I get emails in the middle of the night, 2 a.m., 3 a.m., um, I don't know if he's ever sleeping, but uh, I appreciate all the work that he's done, making sure that things get done, made sure they got them done on time. We've had a lot of tribal staff that have spent numerous hours uh, getting us to where we are. So I want to recognize uh, Jay Kosofka, our finance director, who's uh, pulling triple time to make sure that we got, get, got things done. Uh, I know I'm going to forget somebody, but I can't forget uh, Hillary Farley, our IT director on the tribal side. Without her, uh, we'd still be looking at the outside of the building, nothing to be up and running. So uh, it's, uh, it really was all hands on deck. And I know all of our staff, our executive staff, have uh, picked up extra time and pieces. So I thank each and every one of our staff and our people that have been involved to make this project work. It really was a group effort. And there's no one person that uh, takes that on. So thank, thank you all. Uh, I'd like to recognize we have some leaders uh, from other tribal communities here. I know uh, Winnebago and Santee, the members from Sisseton Wapaton that are here. I want to thank all of you, the tribes from the Great Plains that are here today, to join in, joining with us and celebrating this uh, historic occasion for us. I also want to take yes, thank you. I also want to take a minute. A lot of what we have done since our termination it has, has been a rebuilding and understanding what was lost in our history. And, and that's, that is no small task. And one of the reasons that we are here today for restoration, restored lands, sovereignty, all of those things that are inherent to the Ponca people, we've had help along the way. Poncas have not been able to do this alone. And one of the key components that gets overlooked because it's in a folder somewhere. But I want to recognize Dr. Beth Ritter and the work that she did on helping Fred Leroy and the work that the, they did for the restoration. Uh, invaluable work talking about our history. And uh, I, every time I read that document, I learned something different. So thank you, Dr. Ritter. Now my speech. So I want to, again, I thank Wakanda for bringing us all together here today. Our tribal elders, all of our people that are here, our tribal members that are here, our employees, all of our guests that have honored us with your presence and, and sharing in this time with us. On October 31st, 1990, President 
George H.W. Bush signed the Ponca Restoration Act into law, a bill that restored the government to government relationship between the federal government and our people. As we gather today to celebrate our restoration and the opening of the Prairie Flower Casino, I want to reflect on the progress that our Ponca nation has made. Facing the challenges brought by federal, uh, failed federal policies we inherited, forced removal and the loss of our homelands in the 1800s, to the termination era in the 1960s that led to more land losses and a disruption in our relationship with the federal government, to the task of rebuilding our tribal nation with our restoration in 1990, our people have proven our resilience. We have persevered. We are the seeds of resistance of our ancestors. We are survivors and continue to grow and become stronger every day. Through the efforts of my elders, those that worked on the Restoration Committee, we are here today. From the initial office that they established that had the only office furniture was a card table, four folding chairs, and a borrowed coffee pot, we have come a long way to be here today. And we continue to grow. Our population, the needs for services for our people, the need for more room. And we have outgrown our humble start. We have been able to grow with eyes to the future. Today we are brought together for the opening of Prairie Flower Casino. This is a symbol of our resilience, of a more secure future for our next generations. The opening of Prairie Flower Casino will support Ponca tribal citizens and the public. Proceeds will help fund our new health facility in Ralston. These are physical structures that show the commitment we have as people to care for each other and to ensure that our citizens and our children have the same opportunities as others and to provide for the future of our people. Just as our ancestors used the tools they had at the time to provide for them, we see prairie flower as an economic tool that we have, just like any other government would do, to provide for our citizens and create foundation for generations to come. Like city and state governments, we provide services to our people and we struggle to fully fund these needs. A symbol of our growth is the Fred Leroy Health and Wellness Center. For 20 years, we have provided health care to our people and other natives in the metro area. And this year, we have taken step, steps into expanding those services. Fred Leroy Health and Wellness Center is currently a 12,000 square foot facility. With the help of Shakopee, we've been able to buy and pur purchase our facility in Ralston that includes 188,000 square feet of space on 12 acres of land. Over 100,000 square feet of that building will be dedicated to a new clinic to provide for our people, the natives in the metro area, which is over 13,000, which over 170 different tribal nations use for our people, natives, and the public in general. <laughs> Proceeds from the casino will help support land acquisition. Just last month, we were able to acquire, and we now own, 1,800 acres of our homelands, our traditional land that was taken from us from our last treaty. Land acquired and lost again with our termination in the 1960s. That land includes Chief Standing Bear's last allotment and his burial site and will forever belong to the Ponca Nation. This land is significant to our people it's a physical representation of our restoration. It will also, this casino will also benefit our community partners in Carter Lake. Being a good neighbor and following Shakopee's lead and supporting the communities where we live and work is a central value to our people. As such, we've committed to providing three quarters of a million dollars annually to Carter Lake for annual contribution to support general city improvements and also support first responders like police and fire. I want to again thank Mayor Ron Cumberledge and the City of Carter Lake and its City Council, who through this process have lent their support. We're proud to be able to bring a project of this size 
and future growth to the city of Carter Lake. Today, we open and we add 100 new jobs to the city of Carter Lake and to our tribe. This is a tremendous opportunity for local businesses, both inside and outside of Carter Lake. <clears throat> we must continue to evolve and grow and promote and protect our tribal sovereignty and our self-determination. We're in an excited period of job creation. Today, we add 100 new jobs. For the last 28 years, we've added roughly about 200 jobs during that time period. Today, we add 100. In the next several years, in the next two years, when our new clinic opens, we'll add 250 more jobs related to health care. Those people will come from this community. Those 100 people that we hire here today that work for the casino, about 20, rough, little over 20, are Ponca members. The rest are from Carter Lake, Council Bluffs, Omaha, and the metro area. This is truly a group effort. Proceeds from the casino will help our growing economy start a full service elders program and continue to promote and enrich youth programs and protect our identity by creating and sustaining a fluent Ponca language speaker program. Without our language, we, we lose who we are as Poncas. Our sovereignty and our future depend on it. We continue to bring our elders' vision to fruition and we have much to be thankful for. Our tribal economy is growing and diversifying, our health care is expanding, and our decisions are guided by our culture. We're here today because of our ancestors and our elders, and we honor all of you with the utmost respect. But we also must protect for the future of our youth. The world is a much different place than it was a generation ago when the, when the tribe was restored. We must prepare our youth for the next generation and the seven generations that follow them. That is our sovereign responsibility to each other and to them. We know what it means to face losses, the loss of our people, our lands, our relationship with the government. Each decision we make now is to protect what we have for the future and ensure this foundation is longstanding and protected. This casino doesn't define who we are as a tribe. Our culture, our history, and our people do. But it does symbolize our sovereignty our ability to determine what economic development opportunities will best meet the needs of our citizens now and into the future. Mayor, I thank you again for the City of Carter Lake support. Chairman Vig, the Shakopee community, thank you for your support over the years. And I wanted to say, not that it's important to have a dollar amount to it, but in my time serving on tribal council with our other council members, the Ponca tribe has been a direct recipient of about $10 million in funds and grants. And so we're very thankful for all that you've done for us. Gatego, we long. Thank you. I know everybody's ready for coffee in the bathroom. And so we, next we have ribbon cutting. And we would like to invite our tribal council members that are here, mayor your city, and your city council, Shakopee, your representatives, Chairman Stevens, to join us. James, you're part of this now. We made him an honorary member last yesterday. So uh, with all that that entails. And so, and then if we have any tribal elders here, we want to invite you up here so we can get, uh, do this ribbon cutting today. Thank you.
All right, sir, when you're ready. 